So today we're working on templating the bulwarks on the port side, which is very exciting because we thought we'd be doing this like a month ago probably. <laughs> Took way longer than we thought to do the deck replacement, so now we're finally on to that. So what I'm doing, I'm taking these strips of door skin and I'm notching out a little bit, you can kind of see that drawing there, for the rub rail. And then taking a pencil along and marking the angle of the bulwarks and the angle of the hull and cutting that. And then that should give us the angle that the bulwarks has to go along the whole way. And at the same time, Logan is going to be welding on little strips of steel. And they're also going to be at the right angle all the way along for, eh, for the bulwarks. So that's what we're doing today. Hopefully it works. Hopefully we can get the right angle this way. And then we should be able to knock out the ball works. That's exciting. Oh, and I'm getting bit by mosquitoes already. welded all of the these C-channel pieces along the same angle as the bulwarks. Uh, I welded them to the deck, clamped them to the bulwarks, or clamped them to the bulwarks first, then I welded them to the deck. <laughs> uh, so that when we cut the bulwarks off, we have something to realign the new bulwarks up with to get the right angle. So they're, they're kind of like a template and we'll, we should be able to just bend them in or out just to make it fair because um, there's definitely some, a little bit of waviness in the bulwarks right now but because it's so rusty. Today's the big day of cutting off the bulwarks on the port side anyways. Yay! So we're just getting set up for that, uh, dragging the plasma torch up with the crane or hoist or whatever you want to call it and I'm gonna cut it off attempt to cut it with the plasma hopefully it'll push all the way through the paint and stuff might have to grind that off but see how she goes we'll find out in order to make sure the massive amount of metal spray from the cutter didn't burn anything in the shop that we needed to keep safe we strung up a fire blanket. Cutting went fairly smoothly, and surprisingly the only thing that burned or melted was a bit of the fire blanket. sections off and the boat looks quite different. Yeah, I think it's going pretty good. Yeah, you're coming off pretty much how you expected. Yeah, we haven't had to grind any paint even though it would work a lot better if we had. I just <coughs> really hate grinding paint. So. Mm -hmm. and the process continued on until the entire port side was cut off. So today we're continuing the prep work for the ball works. Logan is going to be up there grinding the lip flush and 
level and even all the way along so that we can attach the new plate to them. And I'm just down here cleaning up the new plate and beveling it. This guy right here, as you can see, it's been started right there. So both sides are being cleaned and then both sides are also being beveled. And that's just to make sure that the weld actually penetrates. So that's what I'm doing all the way along there. And here's Max coming to say hello. Oh, what's that? So we're actually going to have three different thicknesses of flat bar that we're using for this railing, or for the ball works. Um, this is five inch, then there's a four inch piece, and then there's a two inch piece that's going to be used at the back. So I'm just starting with the five inch piece, which is ten feet, and then the four inch piece is going to be twenty feet. And then the two inch piece is just ten feet again. So. That's it for the whole thing. We decided to redesign the ball works a bit and replace the original with a single piece of flat bar instead of a box again. We are pretty determined to have zero empty air spaces on the boat, and that would be impossible to do with the original design. And then up went the first bit of our ball works. starting at the bow we're gonna get those that bit tacked first and then move our way down so we'll get the first 10 feet in um, and basically <laughs> we're gonna change the shear line slightly by an inch <laughs> inch at the bow at right? the bow yeah um, and the reason we're doing that is I don't really know why because we felt like it. No, no it was, um, it because we're going to put a step at the back now. So if we had that just the step at the back and left the rest of it, it would look a little bit odd, I think. I think it's going to look better if we have the shear come up a little bit at the bow and then have the step at the back to match because they'll both be the same height difference. Right. Uh, that is the plan anyways. It will, the reality may be different, but yeah. Cool. We'll fit that first 10 feet, and then from there we'll just work our way back. And that we did. One alteration, hammer, and tack at a time. That first section turned out to be a lot more difficult and time consuming than I thought it was going to be. The front four or five feet was okay. It was took a little bit to get it exactly where I wanted and then it was easy coming back. I had to break a couple of these, grind the, cut the tack welds and bash it out of the way a bit because our material is thicker than the old material and I thought I left enough of a gap that it would be okay but not quite so it's a good thing that we did the templating on the outside because now I can do this so now we can take the templating and you can see the gap is even all the way along doesn't look even on camera but oh there we go yeah yeah it is it's really good so my templates actually work so Taryn's templates work Yay! You never know with me in templating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the gap is there because the paint in the fairing. Oh, right. So that's how thick the paint in the fairing compound is. But yeah, it really did work out. You just have to 
get this back piece in shape and, and we're good. As we've come along and it's got a twist to it, it brings the flat bar down more and it's actually fit really well. Oh, like really? it fits way better than I than it looked this morning. Good. Because so. yeah, it was not looking great earlier today. <laughs> no. And it is going really well. Like the only problem is basically because the hull plating has a curve to it as it the, like the old hull plating that used to come up for the bulwarks mm -hmm. had a slight curve to it. Mm -hmm. And this, we can't bend this. Right. So this will be flat. So all we can do is get the angle right. And then if we want, we can ma basically make the curve with the fairing compound. But I don't think we're even going to bother. I think it looks pretty good the way it is. Uh, it's nice too because the rub rail's right there and that really breaks it up so you, you wouldn't notice. Right. But once we get it tacked in place, we'll go and have a look, climb up on ladders and look at it from every angle that we can and make sure that it looks good. Cool. Because we're basically just... Eyeballing. Eyeballing. got the whole thing tacked on. It did. How does it feel? Feels pretty good. This here, I'm still not quite happy with the angle here, but there's just no way to get that right. No? No, it was... It wasn't great to begin with. It looks pretty good from where I'm sitting. Yeah, it's just right here. There's a bit of a... It doesn't round. Oh yeah. As much as I'd like it to, the bottom does, but the top doesn't, and I don't know why. Mm. I just can't get it to go. Yeah, so we still have that piece to put on top here. This one. And if we go... Probably nine feet will give us plenty. Because at nine feet... Then we'll do that one on top next. That one should be easy. So get that all tacked on before you, you start welding, like actually doing the welds? Mm hmm I don't know if we'll get welding today, but... Get, it'll be tomorrow though, if nothing. Yeah, well, we might, might be able to get at it today, but we have to remove all of the pieces that I haven't removed yet. All the braces? Yeah and grind the deck and then in between where all these braces were like underneath here has to be ground back to bare metal oh. so it can weld it like it's just tack welded and i can't even get it to flex so i wonder what it's going to be like up here it was about the same when I tried it up there, but I'm not as strong. Yeah, holy cow. That's nice, hey? Yeah, that's really nice. So for the people that thought that this was going to be floppy and flexy, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and once we get that pipe on the top of there, there's just, there's going to be no movement. Maybe right at the bow, but we don't know if we're going to put braces in there yet or not. Once we remove the the little brackets that we had made up, we'll give it a test and see. But I think it's going to be pretty stiff, pretty rigid. So yeah, seems that way. And then it was time for the step, which was by far the easiest and fastest piece.
So you got the whole thing tacked on. The whole thing is tacked on. Woo! It's pretty exciting. That's a that's a big thing. It's a big step. Yeah. Now it just have to weld it all. Finish the ends and the step here. And then Oh yes, yeah, so we have both all three ends are kind of like not really finished. All three ends. This, what I mean by all three ends is, it's actually four, but where the plates come together and also the ends of them, we just have left kind of weird. So there's obviously that one. That one's just square right now. And up at the front, you can kind of see from here, like the two sides of the plates, they're just square, and then right at the front of the boat is just square. So, we still haven't really decided what we're going to do for each of those joins, like if we're going to have it at a 45 degree angle, or keep it at a 90, or cut them back somehow, so that's why we've left them. Um, yeah, like we talked about earlier, I don't know if it was this video or last video, but that's, yeah, we're trying to determine what we're going to do, so they're just all left at 90 degrees for now. There's just so many little design considerations when you're redesigning something like this, like used to be. The bulwarks used to be five and three quarter inches. This step here is four inches. So it just ran straight and this piece was really low. That's it. Right. So it's only four inches now plus the pipe. And we didn't want to do just straight pipe along the deck because we thought that would look really silly. So Instead of putting the pipe along the deck, which would have made it pretty much the same as it had been, we put this on and then we'll put pipe on top of that. So just a few more things to think about. But you'll have to wait until next week to find out what we decided to do there. Curves. <laughs> Her boat's got curves again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so this morning we just need to prep for welding the bulwarks on totally and we have some some spots where I found porosity while grinding and that's the point of grinding uh... well not the whole point but yeah anyway so I feed those out and we'll weld those up so we're just gonna go along and clean up where the brackets were all along the frames and just clean up this bit here because it's a little bit rusty and a little gross. So we'll clean that all up and I'll go along on the outside and V out the outside. And So what do you mean by V out the outside? So I'll take a worn out grinding disc that's kind of, well this one's not a good example, but there's probably some good examples right here somewhere. Nope. <laughs> oh, I've used them for that. There's a good example. So it's got pretty much the perfect profile for a weld to go in there um, on the horizontal. And so, so you're I'll going in between the two pieces of steel, right? Go in between the hull plating and the bulwarks, V that all out, and I'll be able to get that filled right up with weld. Um, and then if I'm any good at welding, it will also minimize the amount of grinding I have to do after. The tacks are all pretty bulbous and ugly because I just poured a lot of crap on, t in like a lot of heat, a lot of um, wire into them to get them to stick and I was using the higher um, setting to get a good hot tack to stick on there and also I was using it to pull the metal uh, one way or the other because it's got quite a twist to it as it goes uh, like in certain sections it it's got a compound twist so it bends and twists <laughs> and Have fun. yeah it's just easy to do it with weld versus uh, tooling after some practice it becomes obvious how far you can actually pull stuff. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So 
so that's basically what we're gonna do this morning and then we're gonna start back here because the welders back here and work forward which I'd rather work the other way but I don't feel like dragging everything back through the tarps and no all the fire watch stuff is set up back here too so yeah yeah so after we do grinding Taryn's gonna grind the the deck stuff and I'll grind the outside stuff and then I will start welding and Taryn will do Firewatch. Yay, Firewatch. Your favorite. I get to listen to a lot of podcasts. So Firewatch is pretty much me sitting down below, like you guys have seen, um, and watching the walls to make sure that fire doesn't start. And when it smokes a lot, I spray it with water. So I just sit there with headphones and watch a wall and listen to mostly podcasts, so a lot of podcasts listening this past month. We ground the deck. And then Logan stitch welded the new bulwarks on. As I periodically sprayed water on our hull. So last night we finished the welding on the bulwarks. I was so tired that I didn't get a chance to chat about it and to show you guys. Um, so we got almost to the end and there was about six welds left and then we ran out of wire so Logan had to switch the wire over before we could finish. And it took us about nine hours yesterday to get that job done. And I think it was between seven and eight hours of actually welding. The final temperature on the boat last night when we finished was 38 degrees. <laughs> so it was a hot one. And dealt with the heat. What are you doing now? I am trying to do something that I am awful at. That is drawing and doing math. <laughs> but why, Logan? What's our task today? You're going to have to wait until next week to find that out as well. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, commenting, and liking. Your views and engagement really help to keep us focused throughout this project. And an extra shout out to our Patreon community for your constant feedback and input as we learn and build along the way.